to be. This time, let us receive us. Kevin Bradley. God. Words of God bless. Thanks, man. Give him a hand, Kevin. Second of my messages, 300. 300. There was a popular movie out not too long ago by the name of 300, where 300 men held up thousands of men. And what God is needing today is he just needs 300. It's not a number. He just needs some people who are willing to take a stand. Matthew 4, 4, it says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that received out of the mouth of God. So anytime you say something, you want to be able to back that thing up with Scripture. Because if you can back it up with Scripture, guess what? You're not mad at me. Why are you mad at it? God. Judges the seventh chapter, the first through the seventh verse, then the sixteenth through the eighteenth verse. Three hundred working together on one accord. But let's look what we had to do before we got to the three hundred. First, he had to make the cut. Look at Judges seven and three, and he said, "Now therefore, go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart. If you're fearful, we don't need you with us. If you're a fearful Christian, you can't fight the good fight." We heard about fighting a good fight last week from the pastor. You can't fight a good fight if you're a fearful Christian. A lot of us are afraid. But let's go to 2 Timothy 1 and 7. And what does it say? For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So God has given us power. He has given us love. He has given us a sound mind. God has not given us the spirit of fear. See, we have too many Christians trying to be politically correct. We have Christians who are afraid to pray in the name of Jesus. The Bible teaches us that that is the only name whereby we must be saved. So if you do not pray, when you pray, you get somewhere you get up. Politically correct, I heard a young lady praying. She said, and, and his precious son name. And whose son's name? I have two sons myself. My daddy has two sons. Minister Hirsch has some sons. Whose son are you praying to? You better say the name of Jesus. Because there is power in the name of Jesus. Don't be afraid. Who are you afraid of? Don't be afraid of those who can just kill the body. But be afraid of the one who can destroy the body and the soul. You can kill this body, but you can't send me to heaven or hell. If you don't want me to pray in the name of Jesus, don't ask me to pray. We're trying to be politically correct. Don't nobody want to hurt nobody's feelings. Everybody wants to say all religions are equal. All religions aren't equal. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the truth and the life. If you pray in any of them folks, you're going to hell. Who the Muhammad? There ain't none of them folks got no heaven to send you to. You better pray in the name of Jesus. I can't be politically correct as a Christian. Let's go to Matthew 10 and 33. Whosoever shall deny me before men, him. Will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven? So if I deny Jesus and He denies me before the Father, there is no way that I'm making it into heaven. We want to deny Jesus because we're scared I hurt somebody's feeling. You hurt them by sending them to hell. You ain't talking the truth. Second cut. That was cut number one, those who were afraid. Judges 7 and 6. And it reads, and the number of them that laughed put in their hand to the mouth were 300 men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. See, they got down on their knees. I don't know why they got down on their knees. It doesn't say there was something wrong with going down there on their knees. But apparently there was something that God didn't need with the people who got on their knees. He needed those people who laughed like a dog. See, that was the second cut. You see, they were good men. They were not fearful. But they needed some training. Sometimes we need some training in the church. Sometimes we just don't know no better in the church. Sometimes we just haven't been taught. Sometimes we haven't studied it. Because the Bible tells me to study to show yourself approved. So if you haven't been taught something, you should have studied it on your own by now. Especially if you've been in church 30, 40 years. You're talking about you don't know no better. Come on now. This is my lesson right here. Romans 10 and 2. And it reads, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Sometimes we have a right zeal, but we just don't have the knowledge. Sometimes you got to cut people in the church. You got to put them over the side so they can get what they need to get. And then they get that knowledge. Then maybe they can get back on the team. See, we're working some things right here. See, he had 300 people. He said, the 300, these are the only men that I'm going to need. By these 300, am I going to save you? I don't need anybody else. See, they, had, they were going against thousands and thousands of men. But God said, all I need is 300. I don't want you to get the glory. Because without me, you are nothing. I don't need all these men that you had. From 32,000, he brought them. He brought 22,000 men. After that, he only had 10,000 left. Another 9,700, when you do the math, men left the second time. But he said, I don't need them. All I need is 300. But can we get 300 people? Can we get 300 people in Lobo? Can we get 300 people in Arkansas? It's going to be what God needs. 
need us to be, we're going to do what God needs us to do. We need 300 people. There's 300 men to stand up. 300 men and women working together standing up. He said, see these men, they weren't afraid to get down and dirty. See, I don't know if there was anything wrong with the men who got down on their knees. Maybe they just didn't have all the right knowledge. But the men who laugh like dogs, see, sometimes you got to get dirty, you got to get down with. Sometimes you got to hit the street. Sometimes you got to minister to people who don't want to be ministered to. Sometimes you got to share your testimony. Sometimes you got to let people know you ain't always been that you've done some dirt too. 300. Now 300. I'm going to slow it down right here. Let's look at Judges chapter 7. 17 and 18. And this is the problem that the church has. It says, And he came unto them. And he said unto them, Look on me and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do so shall you do. As Christians, we ought to be looking alike in our actions. As Christians, we shouldn't be contradicting each other. As Christians, we shouldn't be at war with each other. I had a Muslim tell me, she said, how can I believe in Jesus and get saved and y'all can't agree amongst each other? She cut me deep, but the sister had a good point. Then I did some study and found out the Muslims don't get along either. They got different sex, just like we do. Running around, killing each other. Cutting up just like you know a lot of times Christians do. Acts 2 and 1. And it reads, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Lord have mercy. They were on what? One, one accord. They weren't bickering with each other. They weren't fighting with each other. They weren't being jealous of each other. They weren't trying to tear each other down. They were on one what? One accord. One accord in one place, fellowship with this church. We can't fellowship with that church. We don't like the way they do this. We don't like the way they do that. How can we be so separate and all of us reading the same Bible? Somebody has a misunderstanding. Somewhere. First Corinthians 3, 4 through 9. One said, I'm church of God in Christ. One said, I'm Baptist. One said, I'm a church of Christ. Who is the church of God in Christ? Who is the Baptist? Who is the church of Christ? Nobody. What's it is? One planet, one water. But God gave the increase. So we shouldn't be worried about which denomination we come from. We shouldn't be worried about what's in here, what's in the book. Look at 1 Corinthians 1, 12 and 13. Just one page before that. It says, Now this I say that every one of you said, I am on Paul and the eye of Apollos and the eye of Cephas and the eye of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Oh, oh my goodness. Wait a minute. Oh my goodness. Was anybody in the church of God in Christ crucified for you? Was anybody in the Baptist church crucified for you? Was anybody in the church of Christ crucified for you? Was anybody in the Methodist church crucified for you? Who went to the cross? Jesus. Right here, what does it say? Is Christ divided? Why are we divided? We all saying we Christians. It says, other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. We have to come together. We can't come together. Somebody say 300. The last toe I'm going to step on today is tradition. Mark 7, 5 through 9. We get so caught up in tradition. Do this, do that, wear this, wear that. Don't do this, don't do that, don't go here, don't go there. Back it up with the word. What does the word of God say? You know, we put aside the number one commandment of love because we worried about tradition. We worried about we got to look prim. We got to look proper. Then we got a man in a, in a dress in a two or three piece suit, sleeping with every woman he can in the church. He looking prim and proper. But his heart ain't right. We need to be really worried about what these people are about. No, I'm not saying you let somebody come up in church shacking, doing this, doing that. No, I'm not saying that you let a homosexual get up in the poor prison and preach because you need to sit them down because it's not according to the commandments of God. But we need to get them up in here so they can hear some of this word. But see, I like what Gideon said. Gideon put God first. Gideon said, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. A lot of our problem is, is we saying the sword of Kevin and of the Lord. The sword of the pastor and of the Lord. The sword of the Urshan and of the Lord. See, we got it backwards. We got this thing mixed up. We got to flip the script like they say. It got to be the sword of the Lord that end with you. See, a lot of times we're trying to get God to go along with our plan when we need to be following along with his plan. Go to Matthew 6 and 33. 6 and 33. What does it say? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. 
And all these things shall be added unto you. If we seek God first, we want to see kingdom growth, not just church growth.